Hey, what is up, Los Angeles? Welcome to the Bet Online Salute to Troy podcast. Coach, I feel weird doing the intro. It's always you, but good to uh, good to be here with everyone. We have a very, very special guest on the show. Obviously, Coach Rowe joining me down below, and then Jake Crane of Crane & Company on the Daily Wire. All things really sports in general, but you know we're having you on talking SEC, talking mm. LSU, as I feel like that is kind of your bread and butter. But my man, how are you doing? Doing incredible, man. Now the football season is here. I, I do got a couple things to say. I know in L.A. you hear the t- words Daily Wire and you're like, oh, my God, here we go with this guy, whatever. Look, we don't talk politics. We're just the sports show on the network. Uh, I don't care who you voted for. Uh, I don't care what you think about immigration. I just want to hit my bets this weekend. So if there's any people out there like, oh, I'm going to come in here talking about the election. No, I'm, I'm trying to see if this uh, – this over is going to hit at 64 between USC and LSU. And I was, we actually were recently out in LA. It's the second time I've been there. We uh, went out there for the sweet 16, um, watched Bama, North Carolina and went to the comedy store, man, had a really good time. So uh, yeah, shout out to everybody in LA. Oh yeah. The, the comedy store is, is great. Love it out here. And it's all Jessel, get- Nick, Bobby Lee, a bunch of this is a good time, man. Well, it's great. Cause those, those comedy places, like, people just show up like they're not even on like the docket of the ticket and all of a sudden they'll just come rolling through out of nowhere it's the and it's best like, part it's yeah. the best part i remember i was there uh a few years ago and I'm, I'm going to the restroom and all of a sudden i'm peeing next to dane cook i'm like this is fantastic it's, like it's where do you come yeah. from it's uh, it's just the way they do it i was hoping Chappelle might show up or something but uh, i was happy with what we got yeah exactly well good jake the only vote that matters is if you vote for pedro and all your that's exactly and i think we all did <laughs> and i think we all did and that brought we were never more together during in, during that time. That's right. Did you does it get like old having to kind of explain that? Like I, I think it's great what you're doing, but does it get old having um, like I, guys... I mean, I here's the thing. I always tell people like if you listen, just listen for five minutes to our show. You're like, oh, okay. Like it's you know what it is, Ryan? It's an old school sports show. Cause yeah. now all the new school sports shows talk about sports and politics and this, that, and the other. And we don't do that. Like we're like the old school where we're just gonna talk about sports. Outside of men playing in women's sports, which I don't think that's political. I just think that's yeah. common sense. Uh, I just tell people to listen. And, and the people that knew me before we went to the Daily Wire know. And they know my brother and, and they know Cone. So, uh, no, it's uh, it's gotten to the point now where people are like, yeah, we, we know. But we watch on YouTube anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> love it. Well, I can say I, I love your show. always have. And I, I got to say, it, buddy. Thank you. I got to say, man, before we... Um... Before we dive into this LSU USC matchup, which is going to be awesome, it would be great if you could make it. Are you coming out to Vegas or are you not making it out? Man, it, here's the biggest problem with having to cover all the games is that I've got to watch <laughs> all the games. I can't go to one game. Like it's, uh, yeah. you know, and I will say, I I much prefer, and now that, you know, YouTube's got multi view, I mean, I got the big screen multi view up. Love I got it. the laptop, the laptop. My brother comes over, brings his laptop. I uh, I like going and, and buying a 12-pack of beer for what it costs for one beer at the stadium, and then I can yep. go to the bathroom whenever I want. So I coach, uh, like I said, you know, I coach for a long time, and, and I've been to enough games. I uh, I know it's going to be a blast, and, look, I'll never doubt people from uh, either L.A., Los Angeles, or Louisiana to uh, have a good time at a party. So uh, I'm sure it's going to be fun, especially in Vegas. Well, Jake, make sure you get yourself some fight on Pell when you watch this game. <laughs> hey, man, look, I, I like a good parallel. You ain't got to talk me into a good time, Coach. Love it, love it. So, okay, well, I got to say real quick before we dive into the game. So, we, uh, Jake and I met, um, we were, I think, on the same network way back then. On, believe, on, right? Believe, believe, yeah. right? Met through Believe, and we did a crossover show together. I want to say it was... Was it UCLA Auburn was playing, or was it just a Pac-12 SEC It was show a Pac-12 SEC. Was it UCLA LSU? It could have been that. I can't remember it made, exactly. It was one of them. It was yeah. one of them. But we were talking Pac-12, SEC. And so Jake come, came on the show. And at the time, you were in like a dark basement, I remember. Dude. Like not the best lighting. You were getting no. going. Your show was already growing big. It was called the J-Boy Show back then, doing big things. And now you've just blown up. And that shows your you know, your work ethic, your knowledge. You, you've gone to different networks. And obviously now you are where you are. And um, I, I have to say, through all that, you always respond to me. You always come on the show whenever I ask. So I always do appreciate that, that uh, you have not changed one iota since starting in this business. And it's great to see your success. Oh, dude. Well, number one, I appreciate that. I'm very, I still think I'm in a coma because, you know, I got sent, we got sent home during COVID when I was coaching up in Montana. And I just started messing around doing it, but uh, just very blessed, man. Look, I only know four things and they all start with F. So I might as well take advantage of one of them. 
uh, once I realized that, uh, you know, you could make a decent amount of money talking about football and I don't got to worry about whether my safety is going to be able to come down and force and, and make the play. I can just talk about whether he did or not that uh, and be able to come home. You know, my father was a coach coach in the SEC for a long time and he was never home. So it's uh, I'm just very fortunate, man. And shoot, you y'all doing big things, too, over there. You know, I'm, I, I know you're trying to brag on me, but let me brag on you for a second. Um, just look real, recognize real at the end of the day, brother. And, uh, you know, we all love the same thing. Uh, we all love this sport. We all love sports in general. And, uh, mm-hmm. man, I'm just very fortunate and blessed that, uh, you know, we can do this and, and get paid to do it. That's the crazy part. Yeah. Jake, I'm just going to be honest with you. We do not love the off season because we struggle for topics. Well, you know, we, <laughs> you hey, here's, hear hey, here's the, hey, coach, here's the funniest part. You know, we cover all the sports. I started out just covering SEC and then started covering all the college football. And then now we're covering all the sports, very heavy slant toward football. But I tell you what, man, outside of March Madness, because Major League Baseball regular season is so ridiculously long. I mean, 162 games is nuts. The NBA playoffs are fun to me. Uh, outside of that, I don't get much out of the regular season. But look, it's uh, y'all both know the uh, the amount. There's no amount of words that can fill the airtime when it comes to football season. So it's uh, it's here. Thank goodness. Yes, thank goodness is right. So speaking of football, let's start with this more general before the matchup here LSU coming off of a 10 and three season, obviously lose the Heisman and Jaden Daniels, but um, real similar story to Miller Moss here at SC Garrett Nysmeyer kind of waited his turn, taken over as quarterback down there. Just tell us your thoughts on kind of where you think LSU sits just within the SEC. Are they one of the favorites? Do you feel um, obviously they've, they've got some, some good transfers in a lot out, but they have a good recruiting class. Their NIL programs really growing. Brian Kelly in year three, just your overall thoughts of the program heading into this, this season. Well, you know, if you know anything about LSU, that they're one of the few big programs in the SEC that has the state all to themselves, and their state produces a ton of talent. So LSU was always talented. I mean, there's not an Alabama fighting Auburn. There's no Ole Miss fighting Mississippi State. Hell, there's not even a, a, a Tennessee fighting Vandy. You know, which which is an unfair fight. They're, <laughs> they're not losing kids to La Tech. They're not losing kids to Southeast Louisiana. And and Louisiana puts out a ton of talented players what, from offensive line, defensive line, skill position. I recruited the state for a while. Uh, you can drive 30 minutes any direction and find a five star or somebody that can play. So LSU is always going to be talented. The craziest part has been the fall off from LSU defensively because me growing up up until the point of, of guys, I mean, five years ago, LSU was always a defensive team to me. Then mm-hmm. Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and them came along. They had that incredible offense. And now it's almost like they've traded places with Ole Miss. Now Ole Miss is a more complete team with the lethal offense. LSU has been a team with a lethal offense, but an absolutely pitiful defense. So when I look at the team this year, they're not going to be able to replicate the success that their offense had last year. That's asking too much. Not only is Jaden Daniels gone, not only is Ryan Thomas Jr. gone, not only is Malik Neighbors gone, but Mike Denbrock, the OC, is gone. Uh, so to ask them to replicate that amount of success, as talented as Nussmeyer is, as good as Lacey is, as good as some of these young players are, and LSU's really good on the offensive line, they should still be a really good offense. I don't think they're going to be as elite as they were. On the other side, the defense didn't really go. I don't think they had a ton of success through the portal in the front seven the way they wanted to, especially on the defensive line. They're still going to be talented players. But they got Bo Davis from Texas, the defensive line coach over there, who really flipped the identity of that front seven into what Texas is now. So I think they're going to be better on defense. It's You won't be as elite on offense, and you won't be as terrible on defense. I actually think LSU will be a more balanced team this year overall and end up with the same record, at least I've predicted them, 9-3. and three. So they're a good football team, a talented football team. Nussmeyer's a really good player. Don't sleep on them. Uh, and they'll have talent outside. But make no mistake, it's the offensive line that's going to make this team go. Uh, So I think they'll be more balanced, uh, which makes them a better football team. But I tell you what, man, when you look at LSU and USC, it's like that Spider-Man gif. You know, everybody's pointing (laughs) at each other. It's like the exact same thing. So you got two, you you both lost Heisman winning quarterbacks. There's a ton of similarities, obviously, uh, between both. And and it should be a fascinating matchup. So, um, you know, like you said, I was just about to ask you that talk about the reflection that you're going to see in this first game and so they got the over at 64 do you think that's reasonable or to me I don't think that's very reasonable I think the under is going to hit just because I think Mm. both defenses will be able to maintain the offenses at times not completely but at times will 
when you need a score, they won't be able to get the score, but they will be able to put some points up. Yeah, well, it's uh, again, when, when you look at I think it started out at like 66 and a half. It's down to 64 right now. You know, one of the best betters, and he's an old head, uh, Danny Sheridan. Y'all probably don't probably don't know who that is. But name, he's, yeah. Uh, yeah, he gave me some great advice one time. He said, you know, when two great offenses are playing against each other, take the under. When two great defenses are playing against each other, take the over. And that sounds like counterintuitive at first, but that's the way the bookmakers are making the line. Like, they're looking at it in, in that light. Mm-hmm. I think what, what to me, one of the reasons why I'm actually probably, unless it gets to 62, going to stay away from the total, is I'm worried about, but I don't think either offense is going to have a problem moving the ball in between the 20s. But Coach, Ryan, you guys know this as well as anybody. Coordinators don't get paid to move the ball in between the 20s. They get paid. Defensive coordinators get paid to hold you to field goals when you get in the red zone. Offensive coordinators get paid to score touchdowns when you get in the red zone when the field shrinks. I think we're going to see that the defensive improvement on both sides show up in the red zone and lead to more field goals than touchdowns. Now, pace of play, I think, is interesting. The new clock rule, obviously, being that the clock doesn't stop after a first down going into halftime or at the end of the game, you've got to take that into account. And I really think, even though Nussmeyer has some experience, they're going to lean on that run game because of that offensive line. And that's going to run that clock. And I think Miller being new, and, and this is why I laugh, I think there's such a common misconception with like Lincoln Riley and Lane Kiffin and Josh Heupel and Steve Sarkeesian. They want to run the ball. Like, they, they really want to run the ball. That, that's where it starts. This isn't, you know, we're going to go air raid all the time, go five wide and Mike Leach this thing. So if I had to go anywhere, I'd go the under right now. But I think it's due more to the, the lack of touchdowns in the red zone uh, as opposed to field goals. So uh, I'm with you on that one, Coach Rowe. I, I tell you, I think the line just went down to LSU minus four and a half from mm-hmm. six. I may be wrong. That's what it was when it, when, it, when it came in here. Obviously, when this gets released, it may be different. I think I'm going to pick a side uh, where this thing ends up rather than a total. But if I'm going to take a total, it's probably going to be a TTP one way or the other between USC and LSU. I probably won't do a combination. Yeah, it's – yeah. Fascinating stuff. It's it's crazy kind of where that line keeps shifting and, and who's the favorite and whatnot. And as you mentioned, the points going down. I think I saw that too. Four and a half is what it did shift at that time of recording this. So, um, Jake, I want to talk about both receiving cores real quick. I know you mentioned the running game, which I completely agree with. Like we cover SC, like Lincoln Riley, when you know him, like he wants to run the football. Like you're absolutely He wants right to run that. it and do the power pass off play action. Yep, That's what he wants power. to do. He wants yep. to run power all the time. They yep. killed, Coach, how pretty was it at Oakland? And I'm a defensive guy. At Me Oklahoma, too. watching them get in 11 and 12 personnel and run power, power, power at that big offensive line and then use that influence pull uh, yep. off the power to hit that power pass and run a co- two-man combination on the outside. It's You have to rob Peter to pay Paul. Either I'm going to give you the slow death or the quick death. When it's hitting, that's why Lincoln and Lane and these guys, give me one, give me a run game, and I'll build everything off of that. The funny thing is, real, real quick, Brian, I'm sorry about that. No, the no, funny please. Thing is, the funny thing is, uh, two years ago when um, Travis Dye got hurt, and I'm a big Austin Jones fan, and I was telling everybody they're going to run a whole bunch of power, and they're going to become a better football team. They ran a bunch of power, right, Ryan? They started running power, and the whole football team got exact, exact better that year. That's the something year that they about it, man. Yeah, power is God's play. If you can run power, you can run anything. Because if you can run power, you can run counter. If you can run power, you can run split zone. Like if you can run gap scheme, which is basically. F you, I'm running it as opposed to zone, which can, you know, is built to cut back and mm-hmm. hit in multiple places. Uh, it's there's something kind of primal about it, too. But it's you're bullying them. Like it's like the old ISO play, coach. You know that? Just it's like the old ISO play. Out of it's information, yeah, with the fullback and just that's go. exactly right. I like this dude, Ryan. He needs to be on more, man. He's talking ball. You. I told <laughs> I did, look, I, look. It's like I said. I only know four things. They all start with F. But uh, you know, if I was a if I was a baker at a, at a high level, I'd probably tell you how to make a, a bomb ass donut. There you go. There, go it. ahead. Go ahead with your question, Ryan. I'm sorry. About no, that. well, this is great because now let's let's stick with the running game. Then let's just do that. And I don't want to put you on the spot here, Jake, but you're a smart guy. I think you can. I think you'll know what to do. So USC obviously got a guy from the SEC in the transfer portal, and Woody Marks from Mississippi State. Yeah, was there? Were you able to watch him at all at Mississippi State? I know it's not your, your oh, team dude. of coverage, but not only that, I game? yeah, I interviewed him at SEC Media Days. I, I love Woody Marks. Woody Marks is good old country boy too. Now mm-hmm. those guys just run better. They they run harder. Uh, here's the thing I like about Woody. I think he's versatile to do enough of what Lincoln wants him to do to be a guy that could legitimately be a three down back. 
His pass protection's got to continue to get better, but find me a good running back out there whose pass pro doesn't need to get better, uh, and I'll find you a guy that's gonna gonna be a, a mid round draft pick in the first round or early in the second round. Uh, that's one of the reasons why Carson Steele's playing for the uh, the Forty uh, Nineers, whoever the hell it is right now. Oh boy's uh, pretty legit when it comes to pass pro. But what I like about Woody is he's kind of a combination runner. Uh, he's he can he rolls his hips pretty well through contact. He's got good vision. He's got what I call alien vision, 3D vision. He can look a level past the level, which is what good running backs can, because they always want to get to the safety, because they know that's the last guy. They make him miss. It's uh, it's touchdowns and, and shots after the game. But I think he's an experienced guy. He's a veteran guy. He played in a league like the SEC, so the Big Ten isn't going to scare him. Uh, and I think he can fit either a zone scheme or a gap scheme um, with the way that he runs. The biggest thing about Woody is – Injury wise, and and look, running backs get hurt. It's just part of it. That's the reason the longevity in the league, you know, is what it is. I think there's got to be times where he's got to be able to take care of himself a little bit better. Um, everybody loves somebody running somebody over, but uh, you know, if you can if you can pop for seven on first down and get into second three, as opposed to putting your head down and turning it into second and two, you they they're going to need Woody Marks at the end of the year as well. So uh, I know he knows that. I know the coaches know that. But I'd say you couldn't get a better person and, and a guy that, that can run the ball. He can really run the ball and catch the ball in the backfield. Um, he's going to be able to pick up protection. He's not going to be, you know, shocked if he gets some sort of looper late or if somebody green dogs him or something like that. So, uh, you know, I, th- I, think he's, I think he's a good fit for what you guys want to do. Yeah, I mean, we Lincoln said back in spring camp that, uh, that he was there, you know, it could be coaches speak, who knows, but he said he was their number one target at running back in the portal and that's who they went all in on. So obviously saw something. I think he was the number one target of a lot of people at running back in the portal. (laughs) Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Go ahead, coach. Yeah. So, uh, here's my question. So, uh, speaking sec, well, big 10, I was about to say pac 12, big, big 10 now, I know it's weird, right? (laughs) Yeah. But it's, it's USC and USC always has this stigma. I'll give you an example. I went to SC, we went to Arkansas and we were told we're going to get beat by Arkansas because they're in the sec. But in reality, these teams are, these two teams are very equal teams, right? So let's say SC gets out of there. 13, 10 wins a really good game, which I think they did a good job scheduling this game to start the season off on, on a Sunday, uh, SC wins 13-10, right? Does, is that a black mark on LSU because they're in the SEC? Or is this one of them games like, all right, you guys play really well. Yeah. You guys play good football. Let's get better. Let's move forward and let's try to get to the playoffs. Well, you know, I, I, I think it's more of a – it's not a black mark because USC did it. It's more of a black mark because Lincoln Riley did it. And they haven't <laughs> been able to figure out anything on defense because – I mean, you got to remember these LSU fans thought Lincoln Riley was headed to LSU a couple of years ago, uh, including myself. You know, I was told mm-hmm. by somebody I trust there's a good chance of that happening. Here's the difference. So I think you got young SEC fans and you got middle aged SEC fans and or college football fans. But like I'm from Auburn. I remember I, I know how physical USC wants to play. You know, I remember 03 them rolling in there, seeing those cats and the way they went downhill and watching that run they went on with Pete. I don't look at USC and see softness on defense. I look at Lincoln Riley and see softness on defense. I don't care if Lincoln Riley was at USC, if he was at Oklahoma, if he was at LSU or whatever. The stigma is Lincoln Riley, not USC. So I I think that's kind of the way that most of us view it down here. What I will say is I do want to give Lincoln credit for finally making the move and, and, you know, getting rid of Grinch. And I don't have anything personally against Alex Grinch, but it's the same movie over and over again. I mean, the amount, and nobody knows this better than LSU fans. How many elite offenses have been thrown away from a championship standpoint because Lincoln Riley's defenses were so bad? LSU went through the same thing last year. If that game's 13 to 10, then <laughs> that something crazy happened, but it would be more because of Lincoln Riley, not because of USC, in my opinion. Yeah, that. Makes a lot of sense to me. It's, we have a, we always joke. We have probably half of our channel is Oklahoma fans. So whenever SC loses, we get a lot of Oklahoma fans coming in here commenting. And, and oh well, they're, look, they're, they're <laughs> I, I think it's going to be a very interesting year for Oklahoma. Let me just put it that way. Y'all, y'all may be getting the second, the the last laugh on that one. At least this first year. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But yeah, that's a whole other story. So, um, so Jake, what I was going to ask about receivers, uh, and I'll, I'll be quick about it, but. Again, a lot of similarities. USC loses Taj Washington, Brennan Rice. No disrespect to those guys. They were great for the program. Hope they have great NFL careers. But everyone out here, including us that cover the team, thinks that SC's uh, receiver room is actually going to be really, really good this year. Um, Just the depth they have, even though they're young, it's just a loaded room of talent. 
LSU loses obviously a lot higher in talent in neighbors and Brian Thomas, both first round picks. What can you tell us about the receiving room and kind of what they look like this year versus last year? Well, look, if there's if there's two things I never question, it's uh, was it me that that left the kitchen cabinets open when my wife gets pissed and whether or not USC and LSU are going to be good at the skill position on the outside. I mean, they just just reload and reload and reload. Uh, so I'm not worried about about the level of of talent on the outside. I think a lot of it has to come down to the offensive line and the pass protection because you can have the best DBs in the country. I've had years where we were really good in DB and bad on the D line and my DBs didn't look as good. Uh, so when you look at the the ability to to protect the passer without having to go max pro or be able to protect the passer without the tight end having a chip on the way out, that's why I think it's going to define this game. Who on the edge of the line of scrimmage can win enough to affect the passing game? Because I do think you're going to see an emphasis to stop the run early by both teams, which means we're probably going to get in a decent amount of third and six and third and seven especially if both these coaches with new quarterbacks are trying to play a game of we're going to figure out if you can stop the run. And if we've got to go a couple drives, a third and seven, we can figure out a way to get past it. So I don't think it's as much about the town on the outside. If they got time, both these quarterbacks can deliver it. Both these, these wide receiver groups can get open. The question becomes who can rush the passer. And that's something we don't know yet. So I was, uh, that was actually going to be my question. I think that we, you know, we got Danton, Danton Lynn and, the offense, he, what, he brought UCLA from like 114 to 50 or anything like that. Yep. Yep. Um, I think the defense will be a lot better, right? And I think a lot of eyes are on Zachariah Branch. And a lot of eyes are on this guy, this guy. But I don't think people know how good our offensive line really is. And I don't think people understand how good uh, these sophomore receivers are coming in. So I, I don't follow LSU, so that will be my follow-up question. Like, is – is your offensive line just just as good, but people don't know? And the, are your receivers coming back just as good, and they just don't know? Because Zach Branch isn't our receiver number one, right? We have an argument amongst ourselves. I think receiver number one is going to be Makai Lemon. People think it's going to be Karen Hudson. Who's the guy that Jamal likes? I keep forgetting his name. Jacoby um, Lane. Jacoby Lane. We got Big Goose Robinson. Like, there's a, there's a loaded room, but everybody sees Zach Branch. Does, yeah. Is LSU facing that same problem? No, I mean, if there's one thing that you can you can count on this year for LSU offensively that's not new, it's it's how good that offensive line. They got two NFL tackles that are going to go really. Will Campbell's probably going to be the first mm-hmm. tackle taken off the board. It's the strength of this LSU offense. It's again, it's really the only thing they return on offense, including the offensive coordinator. I, I, I tell you what, I had somebody last year who's in sports media. Probably doesn't care if I say his name, but but he'll tweet about it if if he hears me say it. <laughs> he watches. He he was an offensive line in the SEC for a long time. I'm probably going to give away who it is, but he he called me after one of the USC games. He's like, I cannot believe how how bad of an athlete USC has up front on the offensive line. He's like, it's he's like the schemes are good, all that's good, but the guys they have right now just can't get it done. And if those are the guys starting, who's behind them? So I'm interested to see how USC's offensive line has developed and going against LSU's defensive line at least the last couple of years. It's a great way to build confidence, which is an absolutely crazy thing to say if you've ever watched LSU before they went on this defensive uh, rut because they got creatures just straight out of Mordor coming at you on the defensive line. But when I, I, I tell you, I, bringing in Lynn was a, was a great move. Bringing in Matt Entz, mm-hmm. North Dakota State's head coach, to be the linebacker's coach was a great move. But Coach Rowe, you know this is, as well as I do, and maybe they have gotten a lot better from a personnel standpoint. I've seen a lot of great coaches with a lot of great schemes look really silly because the players weren't good enough. I've seen a lot of really dumb coaches that couldn't draw up inside zone if a gun was pointed at them win big because they had better players. At the end of the day, football will always be a game that is won by the players and watched and talked about by the coaches. So as good as Coach Lynn is, you got to have the cats. And it's not just your first 22. That's what I always try and tell people, and you guys know this. It's your first 66 because what happens the first time that starting edge rusher goes down and you got to put in his backup and now he's got to play three quarters and behind him, you got the mayor's kid as we used to call it. So <laughs> I'm uh that's what I need to see. And it's, it's weird to say that about USC. It really is because again, I grew up in the era of, Oh my God, USC just has the Avengers everywhere all over the field. So this is, this is why this matchup is so weird. Because both these defenses have not been good, and they're from places that I'm used to seeing physical, 
punch you in the face, kick you in the throat type defenses with athletes that look like they're already in the NFL. So, you know, you can you can plug holes in the ship, but buddy, if you hit that iceberg, that some gun's going down regardless. Yeah. That's that's the funny thing I think when you think of those glory days of SC is everyone remembers rightfully so Reggie Bush, Matt Liner, all those guys, but I remember those, Palomalu. Those defenses I remember Frosty. Or, I remember yeah. Cushing. That's who I remember. Oh yeah. Yeah, those defenses. Maluga. No God. Yeah. Ugh, Clay luck. Matthews. I mean, Clay Matthews is the uh, I mean Yeah. Clay Matthews over there just biting through bricks. Yeah. Wild. So we'll see. Things look to be improving. Obviously, we got to see it on the field. Uh, you know, I've been out of practice and whatnot. And and Coach Lynn today actually we were on a press call and he said he feels that this defensive line has more depth than he had at UCLA last year. So we'll see if that uh, comes to fruition actually in play. Um, but I'll kind of last question for me and then coach, you got one more and then we'll just get a score prediction from you, but looking at defense, we'll end with that. So same thing, both teams made a change at coordinator, right? Big changes on defense, trying to improve to not, you know, if, if SC can even stop a nosebleed last year, they probably win nine games instead of seven. So I mean, if, if they can improve at all, they're at least a competitive team this year, LSU kind of similar boat. So what can you tell us about the new hire, how you feel he improves this defense and have they done enough maybe in the portal or recruiting to kind of add those those players you're talking about that really make the big difference. Yeah. Well, Blake Baker, a guy they got, you know, from Missouri, he's, he's a guy I got a lot of respect for. Uh, mm-hmm. He's a younger guy. Um, schematically, he's, he's going to be fine. A, a lot of it I, I think is going to depend on Harold Perkins because Harold Perkins is the guy on defense that you have to build your offensive plan around. If you want to counter something, right? You always want to set the tone, but Harold Perkins is, he's been moved all around. It's either one of two things, man. Either you can see it in the box or you can't, and they need to put you outside at nickel and blitz you and put you in zone and man coverage. Uh, I think he's been thinking too much. He's a freak athlete. You're not going to be a a first-round pass rusher at 215 pounds. So it's hard to play in the box at this level at 215 pounds. So Mm -hmm. you can either see it in the box or you can't. I think Blake understands that. Sometimes the best way uh, uh, to get addition is subtraction you know, simplify it a little bit to where your instincts can take over and you know what you're seeing. As far as the defensive line, that's where I'm worried. And, you know, from Tim Brando to the LSU guys we've had on, there is an unknown about how good LSU will be on the defensive line, which, again, is a crazy thing to say. They have some guys that are talented, but, you know, potential is just another word for you had not done it yet. So I think Blake will put him in the right position. I think he's going to simplify it for Harold a little bit, which should help out. They're going to be athletic. They're going to be able to run. That's the thing about LSU. They're always going to be able to run. Uh, I think it just comes down to how organized are they and how disciplined are they? Because I think Miller Moss is a sneaky runner. You know, you compare him to Nussmeyer. He kind of reminds me of Stetson a little bit. Bennett, mm-hmm. that's who he kind of reminds me of when I watch him play. Not a big guy. Got a nice arm. Can throw it off platform. You know, he's a second baseman. That's what he is. And he's a sneaky runner. Yeah. So, you know, if you're LSU, can you st- can you have integrity in your pass rush lanes? If you're LSU, are you not going to overrun the mark on the edge? Because all you've heard about is how bad you are on the D line, and all of a sudden they pop the draw out underneath you. I question L- I question LSU's ability to be smart defensively, not whether they're athletic. I think Blake will help there. How much is the question? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's going to be fascinating to watch. Coach, you got one more? Yeah, you, you're welcome to come on the show anytime and talk ball, man. I, I, this is probably our best guest, Ryan. I don't care. I appreciate I don't care it, if anybody gets. I mean, you. I mean, you. I understand where you're talking from, and like you talk from the perspective that I've talked from. You see the whole field and not just the numbers, and a lot of people sure. get stuck in the numbers. You know what I mean? So, and I complain about this all the time. So, but yeah, thank you, man, for coming on. You're 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 welcome anytime. anytime. <laughs> anytime. I, I love I love it like I love it like y'all do. Like like the people that are listening, and and again, congrats to you guys on on the success uh, success of the show. And uh, man, when I'm out in L.A., if I come out there to L.A., I'm definitely going to hit you guys up. But anytime, man. Look, I. I, I'm from the South, and a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, you just think the South is it loves football. Nobody else does. Man, no. Uh, I recruited California. I know there are spots in California that love football as much as we – hell, I recruited Bakersfield. Believe mm. me, I know there are spots in California that love football <laughs> as much as we do. Uh, and I want football to be good everywhere, on the West Coast, on the East Coast. Um, C- Canadian border, Mexican border, man. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorite things, and it's given me a lot. And I'm always down to come on, and I uh, appreciate you guys having me. Love it. Love it. Well, Jake, thank you so much for the time. Like I said, man, really appreciate it. It's great to hear from you and keep crushing it. Uh, you can find him at Jake Crane underscore 
on X and, and Crane and Company is a show. They do awesome, awesome work. So proud of you, man. Proud of where you are and uh, keep it up. And congrats again, baby girl coming soon. Yeah, girl, hope she hope she looks up, like baby. her mama. Hope she looks like her mama. Now I get to go get another gun. Uh, but no, uh, appreciate it, guys. And and again, congrats to y'all. And look, let's let's enjoy the football season. Twelve team playoff. Let's see what happens. Can't wait. LSU USC on September first. Jake Crane was our guest. Thanks a lot for helping us break it down.